Welcome back for another edition of Grizz Tracks here now into basketball season. I'm AJ Mazzolini of the Missoulian. And I'm Bill Speltz, beat writer for the Lady Grizz team. And I'm Bob Mazzarol, the Grizz beat writer. And we're all the way through the non-conference slate of the schedule for both the Grizz and Lady Grizz as Big Sky Conference play starts tonight with Northern Arizona. Let's talk a little bit about where, where the Grizz and the Lady Grizz kind of are at, at this point. You know, they've, they've been warmed up a little bit into the season. Uh, Bob, what have you seen from the Grizz, some of the goods and the bads? Yeah, the, the goods are, you know, they're getting good guard play, both from Kareem Jamar, who is just, you know, he's, he's a triple threat, scoring, rebounding, dishing out assists. Jordan Gregory has had some big games. He had 27 against the Pac-12 team, Washington, so uh, he's a proven scorer. And, uh, you know, Mike Wisner has made some nice contributions uh, here and there. And, and a freshman, Mario Dunn, mm -hmm. who I think as the season goes on, you're going to be seeing more and more. Maybe playing a little bit bigger role him. there. The tougher part was they had a tough schedule. And, you know, they got beat pretty soundly by a Big Ten team at Minnesota. And, and, uh, but they held their own with Washington, had a very good chance of winning that game. And they um, came out on the other side, you know, above 500, which yes, is really the, the goal. The two wins against Idaho were good, and, and, and getting the, the final non-conference win the way they got it, coming back from a 15-point deficit and winning in the last seconds uh, should give them a little shot in the arm here heading into the conference. Right, right. And again, they're going to be taking on Northern Arizona here on Thursday to start with Sac State Lumen uh, on Saturday, both those games at home. While the Lady Grizz, they, they're going to do their first conference stretch out on the road, uh, same opponents, same days. Uh, but you know, another team that finished above 500 in the non-conference slate. What would you see from them, Bill? Yeah, they had a good pre-conference schedule there, finishing six and three. The two good things about the Lady Grizz is they believe in their defense again this season. They, they lead the league going into the conference, and uh, they're getting great guard play with Kelly Cole and Tory Hill. So. Those are going to be two things that they can rely on going on the road. Shooting the ball, it was a struggle last season and the past few seasons. Uh, uh, so they have to be able to rely on that defense when they're not shooting as well, which they didn't shoot as well in their two games leading up to Christmas, and they lost both of those to Temple and to Wyoming. But uh, those are good teams, and they were close games. Yeah, they've got a lot of time off uh, in between those last couple games before Christmas. And now this week, uh, it'll kind of be interesting to see how they are able to deal with all that and what they're going to look like coming out of the gate. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you, AJ. It is interesting. I asked uh, Coach Selvig about it, and he said it was a good thing they could be home for the holidays, but more than two weeks, that's a long time without playing a basketball game. And you look at the teams they're playing this week, uh, Northern Arizona and uh, Sac State, and both of those teams have played within the last uh, week. So i got to believe that's a little bit of an advantage uh, for those teams, but uh, we'll see starting tonight. All right, at least they got fresh legs. So. Um, you know, let's look a little bit at, at the Big Side Conference as, as a whole. Um, Bob, what, what do you know about the rest of the teams that are, are making up the conference and those opponents that Grizzlies are going to be seeing a lot of here in the next few weeks? Yeah, I, I, you know, Weber State is going to, in my opinion, anyhow, they're going to be right there at the end of the year. I think they have uh, some of the best talent. Both inside and out. Yeah, nothing new there. Yeah, they've got Kyle Tresnak and Joel Ballenboy on the interior, and they've got David Berry, who's a who's an incredible athlete and kind of swings between guard and forward. Um, Northern Colorado is going to be real strong again. Uh, that Derek Barden, I think uh, their undersized power forward is probably a candidate for league MVP. Mm -hmm. North Dakota is going to be good, especially if they can find something more besides Troy Huff. They can kind of find a second option. Uh, Huff himself is is a tremendous talent, a tremendous athlete, and he'll be in the running for league MVP. And, and the Grizzlies will be right in the mix there. I you know I, I don't think anybody's going to lose just one conference game this year. I mm -hmm. think you know it could be more like three or four or five even that wins the league. So it's going to be a little bit better balanced this year and uh, it seems like if the Grizzlies really want to challenge they got to do something on the rebounding front that's the big the big hole right now is in the middle um, they're they rank 342nd out of 345 teams in rebounding margin and it's driving coach Tinkle a little bit crazy as a, as a big man himself yeah <laughs> but uh, you know uh, it, it, they're going to have to offset that with good shooting, and they are a good shooting team, and they may be able to win games uh, where they at least stay close to the other team right. on the board. Just no cold stretches, hopefully. So, um, On the other side, Bill, 
looks like Sac State, one of the early opponents, is definitely a, a team to beat, a team that people have some eyes on. Who else is going to be good for the Lady Grays and the Big Sky? Well, yeah, definitely, AJ. Sac State, that's going to be a, a great matchup on Saturday. They've, they're off to an 8-1 record, ranked 23rd on the, in the first mid-major poll, so that's uh, impressive. Uh, I guess the, the, really the, the biggest thing that's happened so far, and, and keeping in mind that some of these teams played their conference opener two weeks ago, mm -hmm. is that on Sunday, Eastern Washington, the, the favorite to win the conference, was upset by Portland State, who had a 2-7 and seven record going into that game. So it makes you think that it's going to be balanced this year, maybe even more than last year. It's not going to be just uh, two, three, four teams uh, top-heavy that way. And uh, it's going to be fun that way. Southern Utah had a good pre-conference schedule. Northern Colorado, uh, everybody's picked to finish in the top three, lost their first two games in the conference. They're really good uh, guard. Maybe the best player to ever play for the team. Uh, they lost her, uh, Deshera Strange, with a knee injury. Mm -hmm. So they're a different team without her. Uh, Montana's going to be there. The Lady Grizz are going to be there again this season. And, uh, and they have a tendency to be. Definitely, and they do seem to, the trend is that they improve over the season. So my guess is that they're going to be right there, and, and uh, then it's going to be, we'll, we'll wait and see what's going to happen with the rest of the league. Yeah, sure. Far too early to call it. A lot of parody, it sounds like, so that'll be a lot of fun as the season goes on. Check back with us next Thursday for another edition of Grizz Tracks as we keep you up to date as basketball season goes along. Thanks for tuning in.